what Balance View is, is um, I guess you could say it's an educational program where we get to explore for ourselves the nature of our mind and to see um, what it is and how it really works. Um, and um, what I find really useful is the terminology that we use here, just to um, simplify things but not oversimplify things. So if I simply... I mean, I had so many different ways of describing my experience, of trying to make sense of it. You know, lots of um, conceptual frameworks and belief systems, and then you know, how am I describing what's going on for me right now, and lots of different ideas and... Um, ways of putting that and to simplify it all to say that right now whatever I'm experiencing is data. So whatever you are thinking, feeling or sensing right now you can say it's a data, data stream appearing within the vast expanse of your open intelligence. Now most of the education that um, we receive is based on the assumption that we are separate, isolated individuals living in a world populated by lots of other separate, isolated individuals and that somehow I need to try and make sense of everything based on this um, This, this idea that I am a separate individual and that I need to manage my thoughts and my emotions and my experiences so that I know how to act in the world. And so all kinds of things come up for us during the day. Um, it can be happiness, it can be sadness, it can be irritation, it can be loneliness, um, you know, good and bad and something in between. And the conventional way that we're trained to use our intelligence or our mind is to focus in on the descriptions and then to try and make sense of what's going on based on really examining and emphasizing those descriptions. So for example, um, if I wake up feeling happy, then I, I need to sort of examine, well, you know, why am I feeling happy? What, what, what's the circumstances that make me happy? Um, is it being here in, in Arambol, in, in Goa? And is that why I'm feeling happy this morning? And okay, yes, that's probably it. So, then what I need to do is I need to work out how can I be in Arambol in Goa for as long as possible. And that's obvious, isn't it? Because I'm happy when I'm here. Okay. And then the next morning I, I wake up and um, I'm just, just feeling miserable. You know, just, oh, oh God, why am I so miserable? Oh, it's because I'm in Arambol. <laughs> it's because I'm in Goa and it's too hot and, oh, you know, I, I just feel uncomfortable and... Yeah, I, I, and ah, oh, so ah, oh, well, so what do I do about that? Well, that, it's obvious, isn't it? I I need to leave Arambol. And and so this is a a perfect example of the way that conventionally we're trained to to look at our experience, and then to try and make sense about what we need to do based on our descriptions. And the only problem with that is it it leads to um, I think a polite term would be uh, an insanity. And what I saw for myself was that I never really felt comfortable with where I was. And if I did feel comfortable, it never lasted. So there was always an ongoing search for something that would allow me to feel really comfortable with where I am. And um, with the simple introduction to the actual nature of mind, and if you just stop thinking for a moment, just stop describing everything that's going on right now, and recognize and acknowledge that there is an intelligence that is naturally present and is experiencing everything you're experiencing right now. Something that's looking through your eyes, something that knows you're sitting in that chair, something that's hearing these words or hearing the bird song, feeling the breeze. So this intelligence is completely wide open and inclusive of all data. So there's no way that you would experience or know anything without this fundamental intelligence, this basic state. And so the very simple practice in the Balance View training is to take short moments of acknowledging and noticing this intelligence, this fundamental intelligence that's always completely wide open, like a clear sky, 
But in my own case, I saw that it went unnoticed because I was so focused in on the descriptions. So if you like, completely focused in the content of my experience without ever actually acknowledging what is the basis of my experience. And the reason why this is important is because when I began to acknowledge this, this open intelligence that's looking through your eyes right now, then there was an immediate sense of, of relief. There was an immediate um, easing of the insanity of looking and being completely fo focused and caught up in my descriptions about what was going on. And the reason that's an insanity is because they're always changing. Have you noticed that? You can look for the last five minutes. Look at all the thoughts and emotions you've had, physical sensations, smells, sounds, sights, all of it an ever-changing display, a seamless flow of data. So that seamless flow of data is naturally present and self-releasing. So there's no way to hold on to any experience or any thought. And what I'd been previously trying to do, great, I feel happy this morning, was to hold on to that. I feel happy this morning, how can I keep that in place? And that would be my game of the day that turned into the game of my life. How can I keep this happiness in place? And how can I keep the loneliness or the sadness at bay? Looking then into my descriptions to try and work out how I could do that. And it is a never-ending task that we never actually arrive at the result that we're looking for. And um, probably like many of you, I got quite skillful at that game. Skillful at arranging my circumstances so that I had more positive data than in other circumstances. And yet the negative data still always came back. So it didn't matter how well everything seemed to be going. There was still this could arrive at any moment a sense of hopelessness or pointlessness or boredom or loneliness. Even when I was in a crowd of friends, suddenly there would be this feeling of loneliness. Really good friends and people I liked, suddenly there would be loneliness. So then I go diving into the data, so what's, what do I do about the loneliness? Maybe these friends are good but they're not the best friends, they're not the right friends. Or and it's just this never-ending cycle of confusion and never really feeling comfortable. So the solution that I discovered through this training was that I have a different way that I can use my mind, a different way I can use my intelligence. And instead of focusing on the ever-changing descriptions, the data, I can just allow my mind to rest naturally in its openness and allowing all of the data just to flow exactly as they are, without needing to get in there and mess around with them. And this was just a huge relief, like immediate relaxation. It's like I, I, can, just, I can just relax. Everything is as it is. And in this moment I can simply allow it to be as it is, without this struggle to make it look in some other way, or to keep it looking in a particular way. And from that position there is an increasing clarity because we have the perspective on our experience of actually seeing what the basis of it all is. And um, there is no going back. There's no going back for me to the way of living a life of complete confusion because I don't know the nature of my mind and I don't know the nature of the relationship of my intelligence to my experience. They're actually inseparable, like the colour blue and the sky. And in recognising that, there is this incredible empowerment, because all of the things that I thought were issues in my life can just rest naturally, can just settle out. I can remain just completely open on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And the practice is just for short moments to test this out. Test out for yourself what happens when you stop describing and recognize this vast openness of mind, just for an instant. And even if you only do that once or twice during your day, I can guarantee that that will have a profound effect. And for myself, I saw that there was a sense of ease, there was a sense of openness, there was a sense of clarity, 
There was deeper and deeper insight into the nature of reality. There was a capacity to relate with people in a relaxed way where I hadn't thought that was possible. And I saw that the difficulty that I'd had, the challenge that I had, was because my thoughts and emotions were what I'd learned to focus on. And because they were always changing, all relating was difficult. All relating was difficult. You know when you're speaking to people, there's just so much going on. It's like, oh, I, I, it's just, I, I like you, I'm, this is fascinating, you're boring, please stop, I want to go away. Oh, you're so beautiful. And like that's in an instant. <laughs> And so when I'm basing my relating on all of these ever-changing ideas, th there's no openness. I'm totally self-absorbed and self-focused. And so to cut that at the root, with just one short moment of allowing that flow just to do whatever it is, nothing needs to change, and recognizing what is the basis of all of those thoughts and experiences. It's the same open intelligence that you identified when you stopped thinking. The same open intelligence that still looking through your eyes right now, still experiencing everything you're experiencing. So one short moment at a time, just bringing it back to that recognition. And test out, see what happens. How does that look for you in your life? I, I was amazed at something that seemed so simple could be so profound and very, very practical and accessible.